Day number three here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. We've certainly enjoyed the weather. We haven't enjoyed the outcomes of the first two days. The Pirates have taken the first two games of this series, and today it's game number three for PNC Park between the Phils and the Pittsburgh Pirates. Now, this road trip has not been profitable for the Phils from a win-loss standpoint. Just one in four. They have only four home runs on this road trip, and all four are solo shots. Two by Marlon Bird and two by Cody Ashey. Hi, everybody. I'm Tom McCarthy, joined by Matt Stairs and Jamie Moyer. We're going to talk a little pitching in this open because we have A.J. Burnett on the mound for the Phillies and Jeff Locke on the hill for the Pirates. And it was last year where A.J. Burnett was kind of the mentor to Locke as Locke was trying to find himself in the big leagues for the first time. You look at the resumes of the two. Of course, Burnett, 388 career starts. Locke, which is 46. One was drafted in the eighth round, the other in the second round. But Locke says that he was an all-star last year because of A.J. Burnett's. And I'm sure that was the case. And when you are the pupil, you're always trying to impress the mentor. And today, I'm sure Jeff Locke is going to be trying to do that with A.J. being on the mound and being his foe. And you see here, Jeff Locke is a very good pitcher while he keeps the ball down, and he really relies on ground balls. Really relies on ground balls, and in this game at Citizens Bank Park a season ago, he kind of dominated the Phillies with those ground balls. He did. He's got a very good curveball. He's got a, a, a good fastball and a changeup that's really starting to turn the corner for him. All right, so he has spent some time in the minor leagues this year. That's nothing new for a lot of big leaguers, even though he was an all-star last year. Now for A.J. Burnett, Matt, he's coming off a start against the Miami Marlins where he walked four guys but didn't pitch all that bad. No, he didn't. And, he, and his command probably wasn't where he wanted to be. But one thing about A.J., he's going to battle every time he's out. He can throw that fastball low and away to right-handers to get uh, the hitters looking. But he also has that two type of curveballs. He has that curveball down and in where you get the, the hitters swinging over top. Then he has that curveball he likes to throw first right that freezes right-handed hitters. As long as he has control of the front door sinker, the fastball, throwing the curveball when he needs for strikes and when he needs to bounce it, he'll be fine. Yeah, I think the walks were one of the reasons why he found himself out of that game, plus the lack of offense from the Phillies. But over the last five starts, he's also been bit by a lack of run supports. He has. He's been frustrated that way, but he's a veteran. He goes out and does what he has to do. He's only given up, you know, not a lot of home runs. No home runs in the last three games. He throws for strikes. He's getting some strikeouts. He's getting uh, key pitches when he needs to, and that's what he has to do and rely on it. All right, so he is back in Pittsburgh where he pitched the last two years for the Pirates. He'll be opposed today by Jeff Locke, who's making his seventh start of the season here in the major leagues. Well, one guy who he knows he has to deal with is Andrew McCutcheon who has been one of the best hitters in the National League since the 1st of May, and he certainly has looked real good in this series. Lineups at first pitch when we return to Pittsburgh. Phillies baseball is brought to you by Xfinity, your home for the most live sports. By Citizens Bank, introducing one deposit checking. Keeping things simple is helping you bank better. By Toyota, the independent sales event is going on now. Toyota, let's go places. By Coca-Cola, the official soft drink of the Phillies. By Budweiser, here's to Budweiser, here's to baseball. And by Independence Blue Cross, the most preferred health plan in the region. Independence Blue Cross, live fearless.
Pirates before the Phillies head off to Milwaukee to take on the Brewers. They're trying to salvage at least one game of this series just as they did. They salvaged one game against the Miami Marlins and two old friends, one old, one young, got a chance to see each other just before they started to warm up. Jeff Locke and A.J. Burnett, Ray Searage, the pitching coach of the Pirates. A.J. had a lot of nice things to say about Ray Searage the other day when he met with the Pittsburgh Pirates media. But now it's game time and Locke has taken the field with the rest of the Pirates. Let's take a look at the Phillies starting lineup. It's brought to you by Xfinity. Your home for the most live sports. Leading it off at center field, Ben Revere. Cesar Hernandez bats second. Jimmy Rollins is at shortstop hill at third. Followed by Marlon Byrd and John Mayberry. Cody Ashley, the third baseman, will hit six in the bottom third of Dominic Brown. Cameron Ruff and A.J. Burnett. And they'll face left-hander Jeff Locke, who was an all-star a season ago. 26-year-old out of Conway, New Hampshire. Locke is just now beginning his warm-up tosses out on the mound because uh, they have, like the Phillies have on Sundays, the starting nine that come out to the field. And they get a chance to say hello to their favorite pirate player here. And the young lady that was out on the mound with Jeff Locke, well, she just stayed on the mound. <laughs> Everybody else was heading out, and Jeff was trying to tell her where to go. He was talking to her for a little bit, and she just stood there, just waiting, looking around. See, he's trying to tell her where to go, and then finally she departed. <laughs> And so he'll start his warm-up tosses right now. A.J. Burnett trying to towel down in the dugout, try to cool down. It's a little warmer today than it has been the last couple of days. We start a few hours earlier uh, than we did uh, the last couple of days here in Pittsburgh. But, boys, the Phillies need to salvage one here. We look at the Budweiser scouting report on Jeff Locke. He's not an easy guy to salvage things against offensively. No, he's not. Uh, he's first of all known as the Redstone Rocket from Conway, New Hampshire. And uh, the rocket uh, features a lot of the same stuff that AJ features, but from the left side, he's got a, a fastball, a curveball, and a changeup, and a curve, a changeup that he's starting to rely on more. And he's also going to rely on a ground ball. He's about 65 percent of the time he induces a ground ball. And with this infield as slow as it is, and their defense as good as it is, it, it's it's a big plus for him. Yeah, Ryan Sandberg said that the infield grass here is probably the slowest of any place that they've been in the National League so far this year. That may change when they go to Milwaukee for the four game series because that's pretty thick as well. Well, it's time now for our Nissan keys to this afternoon's ball game. Uh, the first key is for the Phillies to score early when they've been winning. They've scored early and been able to hold on to the leads. For me, it's it, do whatever it takes to win a game today. Bunt, hit and run, plow somebody over. I don't care. Just get it done. All right. Well, Ben Revere is going to try to uh, take that to heart and start things off. The first pitch of the day is in there for a strike. So we're underway. And the count is no balls in one strike. Revere is one for six of this series. He's hit well against lefties. Overall batting 290 with a home run and nine RBIs. And he's going to be retired on the second pitch of the game. So one away here in the first. I think that's the problem uh, with Jeff Locke. If you get him into a ground ball game, then he is going to have the advantage, just like any pitcher, but particularly with his style. Well, the, the pitches he throws are, are pitches that usually do in, induce the ground ball, especially if he can keep the curveball down, keep it biting below the zone. The changeup can be a ground ball pitch. It also can be a fly ball pitch. And this is some ballpark, too, that allows you to give up some fly ball outs. Here's Cesar Hernandez who shows bunt and takes inside. It's one ball and no strikes. Cesar is playing second base today. It's been a while since uh, they were healthy that we haven't seen Ryan Howard and Chase Utley in the lineup at the same time. Usually one of them's in there. Hernandez hits it out towards center. McCutcheon who plays very deep. Didn't have to go too far. There are two outs. There's Chase Utley who does have today off. He's at the dugout. So is Ryan Howard hanging along the railing. Jimmy Rollins with those two guys out moves from the two hole down to the number three spot. I'd like to see Jimmy take a few pitches here. Locke's got four pitches and two outs. You let this kid settle in and it could be again another long day for the Phillies. Rollins is 0 for 6 in this series. Hitting 247. And he does take a pitch. It's low and in one ball and no strikes. And if you watch uh, Jeff Locke pitch, he looks a lot like Ted Lilly out of the windup. Absolutely. Change you know, up. He also has a very short stride. I just noticed that right there. Ted Lilly really threw across his body. 
Uh, but Jeff Locke he really shortens his stride, which allows him to get over the ball and create a better down, downhill angle. That one misses a little low. Martin holds it for a moment. The Lucky McDonald's Phillies home run jackpot contestant is Joe Fadden of Collingdale, PA. Phillies hit a home run at today's ball game, and Joe win a hundred dollars. Down the left field line on the run is Harrison toward foul territory, and it's out of play. That's right, Matt. I said Josh Harrison. He's playing left field today. So he's played two infield positions in this series. As you look at Locke's delivery, it's almost like an old school delivery back beyond Jamie's days, and it's just a, a nice twist. And you think it's, a, it's an easy wind up that he could rep do over and over and over. But I did notice he goes against his front leg and then he kind of falls off of it. He doesn't go, he doesn't really catch himself and go forward. His momentum takes him. Like that throw there. Yeah. His momentum takes him to the <laughs> dugout. That's the 18th error of the year for Pedro Alvarez. How eye opening is that to have 18 errors at this point? That may be the break the Phillies needed right there. It's like a fairly routine play. That wasn't even close to Ike Davis. No, that landed almost in. Yeah, that almost hit the river. I mean, and, and, and this that's one thing you start getting into your head about throwing across the infield. Ground balls. We've seen it. You know, Cody actually had that tough game where he made three errors. It gets in your head and you it's a hard thing to to forget about. Well, runner at second base now for Marlon Bird and it's one ball and no strikes to Bird. Bird hitting cleanup here this afternoon. One for eight in the series. He has one of the home runs. One of the two solo home runs for the Phillies. Seventeen home runs, fifty runs batted in. Those eighteen errors now by Pedro Alvarez. He is uh, the leader in the clubhouse for errors this season. He has eighteen. And Josh Donaldson, who's going to be the starter in the American League at third base, he has 15. Asdrubal Cabrera, which is amazing, has 14 for the Cleveland Indians because he's a whiz at shortstop. Well, I guess he's not as much a whiz this year as he was. Inside and high, two and one. Yeah, but you also got to look at with the, the shortstop from Cleveland is that he has such great range. He gets the majority of, of ground balls where a lot of shortstops wouldn't get to. And that's why it creates him to have a, 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 a lot more errors. So like Ken Griffey Jr. He had a lot of errors but he wasn't afraid to. Try to throw uh, to throw runners out. Runner goes the ball is hit through the hole and right between Rollins legs into left field a run will score. Well key number one check that off and now add on even more. Phillies get an unearned run here in the first inning. An RBI single by Marlon Bird. It's his 51st of the year. It's 1 0 Phils. How about how close that was to hitting Jimmy Rollins? Well, the good thing about Jamie, uh, uh, probably Jamie's probably going to say as well, is the good thing is that Jimmy tries to steal third base while Alvarez goes over and covers the throw. Opens up that hole at, at shortstop at third base and for even bigger. And I think that ball almost went between his legs, didn't it? I think it did. Here's Mayberry who takes inside. It's one and zero. Oh. Yeah, a lot of times uh, when guys are trying to steal third, you know, coaches don't always want them to do that. But in that case, he had such a good jump. Uh, Alvarez freed himself to the bag. And fortunately for the Phils, Marlon Bird was able to able to find that hole. On the inside corner, one ball and one strike to Mayberry. I guarantee you, Jimmy stole third base right there because he saw the pitch that was being thrown. He threw a changeup right there. And if you're really paying close attention, even with our angle here, on our, our view up here in the booth, you can see the pitches he throws in his glove. So yep. a good base runner is going to keep an eye on that. That ball's popped up to second. Walker makes the catch, and the side is retired. But the Phillies. 
do get an unearned run thanks to the throwing error by Pedro Alvarez. So A.J. Burnett will go to work on top of the Pirates. Warming up. And moments ago, as he went out to the bound, a video tribute put together by the Pirates and a great round of applause for A.J. Burnett after his two seasons here in Pittsburgh, in which he was 26 and 21. Very nice gesture on the part of the Pirates. So AJ now warming up out on the mound. He stopped for a moment and watched it, which uh, I don't blame him at all because it was a, a pretty nice uh, piece of video that they put up there for him. Let's take a look at the Pirates starting lineup. It's brought to you by Xfinity, your home for the most live sports. It'll be Gregory Polacco, Josh Harrison, and Andrew McCutcheon. Then Neil Walker, the second baseman, followed by Russell Martin and Ike Davis. And the bottom third of Pedro Alvarez, the third baseman, Jordy Mercer, the shortstop, and Jeff Locke, the pitcher. Yeah, they'll face AJ, who's coming into this ball game with a five and seven record and an ERA of 3.92, making his 19th start of the season. And he's coming off five consecutive starts of having quality outings, uh, going deep in the game, giving the, the, the Phillies a chance to win. Uh, and as a Budweiser scouting report, 90 to 95 for Samer Sinker, and you can see his record is 14 and 11 with a 2.73 ERA here at PNC Park. Well, the first batter he'll face is Gregory Polanco. And Polanco takes a strike. It's 0 1. Polanco's 2 for 7 with a couple of walks in this series. He has scored a couple of runs. His average is uh, at 299. Third baseman Ashy is in on the grass. And it's 0 2. Try to check his swing. They appeal and he went around, says Hal Gibson. Uh, there's one away. His body moved, I think, even more than the bat did. But AJ with his 96th strikeout of the year. And that's the pitch that we said if he could get over it, and, and it's that pitch that left handers have a hard time. They think they can hit it, and by the time they realize that it's down and in, that's what happens. You get awkward swings or you, you get hitters swing right over top of it. Well, here's Josh Harrison, Mr. Everything for the Pirates. Harrison hitting 299 with five home runs and 25 runs batted in. Next to McCutcheon, he's been, I think, the best player in this series for the Pirates. He's only two for eight with a run scored in an RBI, but he's made every play at second and third. And he's done it very quietly. Sure has. He takes a strike, and it's one ball and one strike to him.
when he five runs batted in in 71 games. He just saw Clint Hurdle. Clint was saying uh, over the course of the last couple of days that Harrison's going to start seeing some more time, uh, even at shortstop. Spelling Jordy Mercer now with Clint Barmus on the disabled list as Harrison's down on strikes and there are two outs. They put Clint Barmus on the disabled list today and they brought up Michael Martinez, the former Phil. Here's Andrew McCutcheon. McCutcheon has had himself a heck of a series. He's five for nine with four RBIs, a couple doubles, a home run. Boy, AJ's a strike thrower in this first inning. He's right around the strike zone with just about everything. Well, and you see the difference here with getting ahead in the count. And, and you know, we've talked about this numerous times during the course of the season when the Phillies pitchers have done it and when they haven't done it. And it makes a, a big difference in the tempo of the game. Um, it, it, I think it potentially changes the approach of the opposing hitters. And it really keeps your defense on their toes playing defense. Even that last pitch, which was a ball, was it was right around the plate. One ball, one strike to McCutcheon. Swing and a miss. It's one and two. 93 on that fastball. AJ's been around 93, 94 here in this first inning. That one's over to third. Diving stop by Ashy, and he's going to have a lot of trouble throwing McCutcheon out. Boy, he was flying up the first base line. That's his sixth hit of the series. Heck of a play by Ashy. That ball was past him when he was able to get to it. Well, the ball was hit pretty hard. You're right. Cody made a great play to knock that ball down, catch it. He was on his belly, and McCutcheon gets down the line pretty quick. Step in a dive right there. But again, he's on his belly. He needs to get up, and McCutcheon got a Great jump out of the box and just beat that throw. So rudder at first, two men down. Neil Walker's the hitter. Walker, a 272 batter with 11 home runs, 37 runs batted in. Inside, one ball and no strikes. All-star team is uh, scheduled to be released a little later on. In fact, we'll probably be in Milwaukee while they're releasing it. Pirates are wondering if Walker's numbers uh, are enough for him to make it as an extra player. He was trailing Chase Utley just the other day for the starting spot. Chase had such a big lead, it'll be hard for anybody to pass him. But the Pirates are wondering, well, does Walker or has Walker warranted enough uh, to be on the all-star team inside that it's two balls and no strikes well by looking at his numbers you can put a little argument there saying yes yeah, he doesn't belong to yeah. uh, you know to be a backup Ground ball up the first base line, that'll go foul. And it's two balls and one strike. During the 2014 season, Turkey Hill, the official ice cream of the Phillies, will contribute $100 for each Phillies victory and five cents for each card to Phillies Grand Slam ice cream, sold to support the Phillies youth baseball and softball programs. Well, for second basemen who have at least 200 at bats playing that position. Walker is sixth in the league in batting at 273. The guy that might have a legitimate excuse uh, is D. Gordon from the from the Dodgers, hitting 296, but a guy with 41 stolen bases already. Well, to bring a guy like that to the All-Star game could really bring a lot to the game. You know, he, he has a lot of tools. You think where D. Gordon has come from, from his rookie year to where he is now, he's made some huge strides. McCutcheon goes, the pitch is off the hands. It's going to bloop in the left center field. McCutcheon's on his way to third. Revere slips down. 
and everybody will stop where they are. There was a thought from Nick Leva to send Andrew McCutcheon once Revere slipped down. Back to back singles, runners on first and third here in the first. I actually thought Leva was going to send him here. You can see it was a, uh, a run and hit, and Ben does a good job of cutting the ball off and then loses his balance. And you know, that's where you're coming around third base as a, as a base run. You expect to score on every ball and catch him and pick him up early. Too many times guys come around second base going into third, don't anticipate scoring, so they kind of break it down a little bit themselves and and say, you know what, I'm going as far as I can right now. Big at bat right here for the Phillies. The way that things have been going for them here lately. AJ can get Russell out here. I think this would be huge for them for the day. At least at least it sets the tone early in the game. Martin's been good this year for the Pirates. 279 with four home runs and 24 runs batted in. He did not play in yesterday's ball game. Chris Stewart got the start behind the plate. There's a fastball first strike one and one. On the Toyota Major League scoreboard the Mets are shutting out the Rangers five nothing. Anthony records hit a three run home run for New York. One ball and one strike to Russell Martin. Breaking ball that missed somewhere. He just asked where it was. Was it low? It's two and one. Two balls and two strikes. There goes Walker and the pitch is inside no throw by Ruff. Stolen base number two for Neil Walker. See Russell's numbers with runners in scoring position now he's got two in scoring position. Three balls, two strikes, runners on second and third. And he fouls it away. That's 22 pitches now in the first inning for A.J. Burnett. Struck out the first two batters in the inning with then a single by McCutcheon and a single by Walker. Plus a stolen base has put runners on second and third. Burnett is ready to go. And the 3 2 pitch. Out to right field. That's pretty well hit. Bird going back. It's over his head. It's off the scoreboard. Two runs will score. Martin's on his way to second. The throw by Bird not in time. Oh, first base open. He went after him with a fastball, and Martin took it the other way. We mentioned his numbers with runners in scoring position. It's his eighth double of the year, RBIs 25 and 26. It's a good piece of hitting. It was a good piece of hitting, but if you saw earlier, he's had a pretty good hack at that fastball away that he missed. Looked like he was sitting out over the plate. I, I'm feeling uh, Cameron Rupp and AJ. Kind of believed that he was sitting on and would be looking for a breaking ball right there. That's why they chose the fastball and it backfired on him. It's a pretty good pitch, but you know, he saw a lot of fastball. He only saw six fastballs in that at bat and one curveball. Well, now, like Davis with a runner at second, so the Phillies trail at two to one here in the bottom of the first inning. 
Uh, Davis takes outside. It's one and zero. Oh. Ike against right-handed pitching, hitting 260 this year. He has five home runs. We'll go out to chat with AJ Burnett. What a turn of events after getting the first two hitters almost, I mean, very quickly. And now it's turned out to, to be a long, drawn out inning with two runs across the plate. It's the 11th first inning run he's allowed this year. It is 19 starts. Well, the Phillies, it's a well known fact that the Philly starters have really struggled in the first inning. Breaking ball. And one ball and one strike. It's become kind of an epidemic for the Philly starters when it comes to the first inning of games. There's a strike and it's one and two. The Philly starters have. Uh, Combined for a 5-2-8 ERA in the first inning, um, which is which is really tough. It really you know, puts you behind the eight ball way too many times than you'd like to be. And we talk a lot about uh, Kyle Kendrick and his numbers, but he's not alone right now uh, in giving up runs in the first inning of games. They've at least they've allowed one run in the first inning for 29 times, 29 games this year. That's amazing. Well, he strikes out three in the inning, but. The unfortunate thing is there were two quick ones, but then three straight hits, including a two-run double by Russell Martin. We'll go to the second. It's 2-1 Pirates. For the All Star break, they'll take on the Washington Nationals. Great giveaway on Saturday. Now that's a 7:15 start, but all fans 14 and under will receive the Fanatic Beach Towel. You can get tickets for all three games by going to Phillies.com. Now, Philly fans, you see them all throughout town. They are optimistic. Everybody I saw last night after the game said, "We're going to the game tomorrow. They're going to finally get a win." And I said, "I hope so." Well, they jumped out to a one nothing lead but they trail a two to one as we go to the top of the second and Cody Ashy takes a strike it's 0 and 1. Ashy is one for seven in this series. His one was a home run. 
out of play. No balls and two strikes. Just missed. Boy, there's a lot of framing going on by Russell Martin behind the plate. Dale Scott is the crew chief. He's the veteran. Uh, he's been around for a long time. And a call, strike three on the outside part of the play with a cutter. Cody did not agree with that one. First strikeout for Locke. Well, it brings us to our Geico quote of the day, and it's Jeff Locke talking about the impact that A.J. Burnett's had on his career. A.J. did a lot for me. I think the biggest thing he helped me with was my confidence. He helped me realize you're here because you're good. You always have to believe you're the best out there, even when everyone knows you're, <laughs> everyone knows you're not. Well, that doesn't sound all that confident at the end. But he did make the All-Star team last year. He did wind up in the minor leagues for some time, though, at the end. And he began the year this year in the minor leagues. Well, when you when you don't have the consistency, I think that's what he's referring to, and it's tough when when you're you do things well, and then all of a sudden you lose it, you can't find it, you're you're searching for it, and you know a, a guy like AJ being a guy, a, around a guy like AJ, I think really helps to solidify that and enforce that. Hey, look, you are in the big leagues, you have good stuff. It's now how are you going to utilize it? And how are you going to attack the hitters and not be um, complacent and in, in using your stuff uh, aggressively? I guess is the, is the best word I can say. Yeah, he walked 84 last year, which led the National League. Dominic Brown grounds one over toward Juan Samuel, who decides to let it go. Figure there was a fan behind him that was in better position than him to field it. Now for a guy like this to walk 84 I mean for anybody to have that many walks but for him it's not going to overpower you so you allow base runners you're going to find yourself to have some problems. Three balls and two strikes to Brown. Well and you see for the most part he pitches down. And he only elevates when he wants to like he did right there to Dominic to, to try to get him to chase that fastball. Dominic hits one softly out toward the third baseman Alvarez this throw is on the. The money. Very supportive crowd. Two outs. Let's take a look at today's current weather conditions brought to you by Oliver Heating and Cooling. Visit OliverHeatCool.com. Matt, does it feel like 78 degrees? Not when you drink a big coffee. It doesn't. <laughs> I should have known better. Maybe we should put some suggestions on the bottom of the uh, Oliver Heating and Cooling banner of what not to do. When the temperatures get too high. Either that or have Jamie put a key to the game is not to drink coffee. <laughs> I think we just need to get you another milkshake. You'll be fine. <laughs> There's Cameron Rupp, the number eight batter, swing at a miss. It's 0 and 1. Or we need you to get you out on the Duchess. Probably pretty cool out there. Rupp is 0 for 4 with a couple strikeouts. Two. Ruben Amaro was saying yesterday, so was Ryan Sandberg, that uh, Carlos Ruiz uh, made progress a couple days ago. Positive progress. Ruff is down swinging. The side is retired. Two strikeouts for Locke in this inning. Phillies go down one, two, three. And we'll go to the bottom of the second.
League 76ers versus the Thunder tonight at five only on Comcast Network. Noel opened up with 19 points the other day in his first summer league game. That was nice to see. We'll go to the bottom of the second here at Pittsburgh. It's the Pirates two, the Phillies one. Pedro Alvarez will be the leadoff batter against A.J. Burnett. Phillies trail at two to one as the Pirates scored two in the first on a two run double by Russell Martin. We take a look at our Mazda leaders and the Pirates uh, have the best winning percentage in baseball since the second of May. 13 games over 500, 36 and 23. They're tied with the Angels and the A's. The A's feel like they've gotten better now with Jeff Samarja and Jason Hamill being added. As the first pitch to Alvarez is low, one ball and no strikes. That American League West could be a fun race to watch as we get through the summer. He's supposed to start today for the A's. He, they asked him whether he wanted to start or not, and he said that uh, his day was supposed to be yesterday, so he said he was ready to go. They'll be hosting the Toronto Blue Jays. Two balls and no strikes to Alvarez. Alvarez with 13 home runs and 42 runs batted in. Inside, 3 0. Swing in 3 0. He fouls it off. Outside ball four, leadoff walk. First walk of the day for Burnett. Yeah, that'll bring Jordy Mercer to the plate. Let's check in with Greg Murphy. Murph. Well, guys, you know, A.J. Burnett uh, obviously was a popular player here in Pittsburgh his time here, and that was evident today by the uh, reaction he got from the crowd. And he met the media on Friday when he got to town uh, and talked about some of the things that he remembered being a part of here in Pittsburgh, most being, uh, you know, ending that drought and being a part of that playoff team that uh, had for a team that hadn't been there for over two decades. And, you know, he talked about that. But, guys, not everything went right for A.J. Burnett in Pittsburgh. I found some video proof of that if you take a look. Uh, this was opening day a year ago, and if you look very carefully out on the mound, he's getting ready to throw his first pitch. He's got the rosin bag, and then the rosin bag, well, the rosin bag gets him. It explodes all <laughs> over him, and he was asked about that as well. He said, yeah, he remembers it well. It actually happened to him two times, two times last season where the, the uh, rosin bag exploded on him, so uh, he did have his troubles with there. He claims it's because he just doesn't know his own strength. That's, that's what AJ said. <laughs> I think somebody was playing a fast one on him is what was happening. <laughs> it was opening day. Here's some explaining in the dugout what happened. <laughs> That'll loosen you up. That'll loosen you up, I would think. He certainly didn't overreact when it happened. He sort <laughs> yeah. of just rolled with it. That ball is pulled foul past Nick Leva. And it's one ball and two strikes to Jordy Mercer. Four for six so far in this series with a couple RBIs. That Rosin ever attacked you, Jamie, when you're out on the mound? No, and I've never seen that happen in my life, so seeing that highlight was rather funny. <laughs> I think the fact that it's happened twice to him was kind of funny. Yeah, usually that rosin bag, it's either taped shut or knotted shut. It's a sanitary sock that's usually doubled. And uh, like I said, it's usually taped or tied. I'm sure somebody was playing a little joke on him. For sure. That youngster right there got a baseball from Dominic Brown, and she immediately threw it back into the crowd, or he did. So they had to go back and get it again. One ball and two strikes to Mercer. Swing and a miss, and he's down on strikes. Four strikeouts for A.J. Burnett. And with one away, it'll bring Jeff Locke to the plate. AJ joked the other day 
uh, that he told Jeff Locke that he's going to he's going to make him wear one at one point. Now he's not going to unless it gets away. But he did joke with him about that. Locke said he dreamed that he uh, laid down a bunt against AJ. Now this is a spot where he would do that. He squares early and he takes outside one and zero. Locke hitting 0-83 on the season. Inside two and zero. Pretty good eye. He pulled that bat back uh, very late. As it kind of cut inside. And he butts that one toward third. Ashy will make the play over to first. Sacrifices successful two outs. Five four on the put out. And to the top of the order for Gregory Polanco. On the Toyota Major League scoreboard the Diamondbacks lead the Braves two nothing. The Braves came from behind to win last night. Paul Goldschmidt though a two run home run today. Diamondbacks traded Brandon McCarthy to the Yankees a little while ago. The Yankees are in Minnesota taking on. The twins. They felt like their rotation was unraveling. Even before they found out that CC Sabathia was probably going to be out for the year. So uh, they pick up McCarthy whose numbers are not good win loss wise. But probably could uh, turn that around in the second half of the season. Is that a definite with CC. It's not a definite but that's Joe Girardi kind of led everybody to believe that yesterday. Balls hit sharply to second. Hernandez hurries the throw over to first. And the side is retired. No runs, no hits. One man left in scoring position. We play two. We'll go to the third with the Phillies trailing it two to one. A question. Log on to Phillies.com. Go to the fan section for all the information and please submit your answer on the subject line. All right, guys, here's the question Who is the only player to homer in three consecutive All Star games? The answer will be revealed a little later on. All Star game this year will be played in Minnesota. As we go to the top of the third here, the All Star teams will be released a little later on. A.J. Burnett will lead it off to start the top of the third. A.J. hitting 194. First pitch is inside and A.J. looks back at Locke. But it's one ball and no strikes.
AJ saying, I told you to throw me all fastballs. <laughs> Been able to ambush a couple fastballs over the last few starts. Two balls and one strike. He told me yesterday he wants to hit a home run so bad. Well, he's in a hitter's count now. It's three and one. But he better start a little earlier. And there's ball four, so he draws the leadoff walk. So the Phillies get a base runner here in the third to start things off as Ben Revere is coming to the plate. Monday, July 21st, the Phillies will take on the San Francisco Giants. It's the beginning of a four game series. Three night games, and then the day game on Thursday is the Citizens Bank Business Person Special. You can get tickets for all four games of the series by going to Phillies.com. Ben Revere had his uh, nine game hitting streak come to a close yesterday. All right, he takes a strike. It's 0 1. He's been one of the Phillies' better hitters, although he's not scoring a whole lot of runs, which is an example of how much the Phillies' offense has struggled. Ground ball to first, and Davis to second for one. And there's a double play. 3 6 3, and there are two outs here in the third. So much for the leadoff batter getting aboard. Yeah, and if you're going to see a textbook 3 6 3 double play, this is it right here. Like Davis takes his time, throws a strike to the shortstop, and gets back to bag in a lot of time. But the key to that is that he didn't try to panic, he didn't panic or rush that throw. He set himself and made a strong throw to, to shortstop. and very easy 363 double play. Well, that'll bring Cesar Hernandez to the plate. He fly to center his first time up. He's 0 for 1. First pitch is there. It's 0 and 1. I know we've talked about it this year. That's a good situation right there. And, and you talked about it, Jamie, in Miami. Try to bunt for a base hit. In that situation with Ben, what's the worst case scenario that happens? You get thrown at a first base to sacrifice, you still advance the guy to second base. Would you do that even with the pitcher on first, even though he doesn't move all that well? Yeah, why not? I mean, and I'm not saying it because of the double play, I was thinking it before, but when you're struggling to score runs, I don't care who's running or who's on base. If you drag bunt, you get a base hit out of it, now you got first and second. You know, and maybe you can have Hernandez, but I just don't think that teams in baseball general run enough in the games anymore. Two balls and two strikes to Hernandez. Ground ball, left side. Alvarez cuts it off and makes a clean throw. That throw he doesn't have any problems with. No runs, no hits, and nobody left for the Phillies. We'll go to the bottom of the third inning here in Pittsburgh. With the Phillies trailing it two to one.
Hi, Thomas Jefferson University Hospitals. Call 1-800-JEFF-NOW for an appointment. Buy the Pennsylvania Lottery. Benefits older Pennsylvanians every day. And buy the Quality Plus Sports stores. Go further. Well, Murph promised he'd be out in a kayak today. I don't think that's... Uh, I don't think that plan is, uh, has formulated. Has it, Murph? You're not going to be out in a kayak, are you? Have you decided not to? Uh, I haven't decided yet. I'm, I'm thinking about heading out there. they got room for me there in the middle, don't they? Uh, yeah, I think they would. All right. Check back with me. <laughs> we'll go to the bottom of the third here in Pittsburgh. Harrison McCutcheon and Neil Walker. Against A.J. Burnett. Murph is explaining to the folks down in the crowd why, why we're wearing jackets and ties. Is that what you're doing, Murph? <laughs> That's exactly what I'm doing. They're wondering why I'm not in the same outfit as you and, and why you guys all look yeah, different. Why is that, Murph, that you're not wearing a jacket and tie? Well, I think we've had this discussion, Tom. Yeah, we have. It's a little warm down here. <laughs> I, I, I hear you guys complaining that it's warm up there. Well, I'm guessing it's a little warmer down here. If you could ever see Matt Stairs right now and you what he's to, looking like. You need to have a cup of coffee. <laughs> A but, one uh, pitch. Yeah, I'm sorry, but I did want to explain to the folks that uh, that's why you guys look so dapper today. There they yeah. are. And we wear suit and ties on getaway days when right. the tra team's traveling. Matt looks like he's ready to do the disco or something like that. His shirt's open so uh, so much at the top. <laughs> and a liner out toward right center field. That'll be in for a base hit, and it's going to go to the wall. Harrison on his way to second. He's there to take three, I would think. He got a little stuck between first and second. Hernandez's throw won't be in time. Man's got more triples than doubles. That's six triples to go along with three doubles on the year. Well, that triple is awarded by how he gets out of the box. And he gets out of the box quickly and thinks a triple from contact on the bat. And he gets to third base rather, I don't want to say easily, but it wasn't a tough triple. But you, you you get those extra base hits because you start from your initial swing. Because he, he did kind of get stop, stuck between first and second at the end as he was heading to the second base bag, but he was able to pick it back up again. Here's McCutcheon now. The infield is back. And it's no balls in one strike. And guys like McCutcheon love these types of situations. Man on third, nobody out. He's got three swings to try to get this guy in. And early on, he can take that big swing and just try to hit it as far as he can. And later on, he can shorten up and try to hit the ball the other way. That pitch is a little low. One ball and one strike. McCutcheon was out there today with a couple of youngsters. So one of whom uh, was part of the Make-A-Wish Foundation and he wanted to get a chance to meet Andrew McCutcheon and play some catch on the field which he did and then he threw out the first pitch to McCutcheon catching. That's back to the box. AJ knocks it down makes a very athletic play to take the ball to hop and he needed to do it quickly because McCutcheon does move. Yeah, there's one away. Back to back games we've seen. Nice plays by the pitch yesterday, Buchanan, and today, AJ. Keeping in front, not panicking, checking the runner at third, and going to first base to get the first out. That'll bring Neil Walker to the plate. Walker blooped a single to left center field. That helped the Pirates uh, score those two runs in the first. Phillies will play the corners in now. The middle infielders will come in also. Rollins is maybe a step back at shortstop. No balls in one strike, a 94 mile an hour fastball. towards center here comes Revere and he makes the catch tagging from third Harrison the throw to the plate is just a little offline 3-1 Pittsburgh 
be a sacrifice fly for Walker. And an RBI that's his 38th of the year. Honestly if Revere's throw was online he had him at the plate. It was just a little offline. The thing that helped him a lot was he had a great read. Uh, the ball coming off Walker's bat makes a nice. Maybe just one little extra step he took but. Up throwing one of the best throws he's made all year is just offline. I shouldn't say he would have had him. He would have had a chance to get him. Look at that replay. It would have been a bang bang play. So no balls and one strike to Martin. He had a two run doubles last time up. Just off the outside corner. Been a couple of instances where they've been laid on his fastball today. Now they still lead it three to one, so it's it's not every instance. But right there, Martin looked like he was a little slow with the bat on that fastball. That curveball will do it to you. Yeah, it could be a, a mesmerizing pitch, and he saw two curveballs the first two pitches at uh, what 82 miles an hour. And there's a breaking ball swung out and missed, and the side is retired. Five strikeouts for Burnett, but another run scores after the leadoff triple. By Josh Harrison. We'll go to the fourth inning here at Pittsburgh. Harrison will catch his breath, and the Phillies are down by two. Mason's What a Bargain Furniture Superstore is now open to the public. For years, businesses have been taking advantage of WB Mason's overstock. Now you can too. Visit whatabargain.com. Three of the books will go to the fourth inning. It'll be Jimmy Rollins, Marlon Bird, and John Mayberry. Well, here we go. You, you hate to beat a dead horse, but one hit through three innings for the Phillies so far. You know, they have a run. It was an unearned run because of the error by Pedro Alvarez, but just one. Well, Pedro Alvarez has a lot of throwing errors. What we say, 18? Yeah, uh, 18, yep. I would say the most of those are throwing, right? Well, just about you, all of them. You got a young pitcher on the mound. Let's see what that side of the infield can do as far as fielding their position. First pitch is inside. It's one ball and no strikes. Rollins was the one who did reach on the error by Alvarez. So he sailed it into the crowd. Outside corner, one and one. After that throw that Alvarez made in the, fir the first inning, I did that twice in one game. 
back to back innings in Japan when I was playing third base. See if he does it again. He said three plays since that overthrow, and they've been uh, right on the money. Here's to Budweiser. Here's to baseball. And with one out, that'll bring Marlon Bird to the plate. All right, when you did that, uh, was there anything to it? Was there? Was it in your head? What, what, why did you do it? Because I was a bad third baseman. Oh, okay. <laughs> Bottom line, I think I hit the exact same chair. First <laughs> inning, second <laughs> inning. I didn't get a chance to do the third because they pulled me right in the middle of an inning. Well, that's pretty good, though. You hit the same chair. I thought it was. So you have to envision the chair next time, man. If that's uh, if you ever get a chance to be out there in your men's league. How many rows up was that chair, man? Well, 12, 13. All right, don't envision that chair. It'll still be over. It'll be too be too high a throw in, in but as men's soon, league. As soon as I did the second one, time was called, and I was taking another game. That's how they roll over there in, that in the Japanese league. One ball and one strike to Marlon Bird. Shame on them for putting you over third base. Thank you. Swing and a miss. It's one ball and two strikes. Well, they do do it differently over in the Japanese league. You know, even the pitching's different. I mean, there's a lot of things that are different. There are a lot of things that are the same. I mean, they keep doing well in the World Baseball Classic, but you know, they, they have a different way of going about things. They do, and, it, and it's. How we get to the ballpark at four o'clock usually you start stretching. Um, they start preparing early in the morning. Very fortunate when I was over there, I was with Alonzo Powell, and, and um, you know, this, we go to the ballpark, and they're required to take like a hundred swings in the mirror after games. They got to run a certain amount of distance in the morning. Um, you have two cages during batting practice, which I thought was tremendous. So you have two BP throwers going the exact same time, you know, the alternate pitch, pitches, but you have two cages set up and you hit for 10 minutes by yourself. And then you go into a rotation or is it 10 minutes in each cage? 10 minutes in one cage. Oh, okay. So they bring these guys in and it's everything is just, it's, it's different because they have, when you're, when, when the catcher's sitting on the, he sits on a stool when he's catching batting practice. I mean, it's, it's really, it's interesting. It's and pretty cool. It is. And, you, you, and a lot of balls are moving around, but you see in the hitters get a lot of swings. They all thought, yeah, we we'll give upstairs you 10 minutes, so he'd be tired. No. <laughs> Here's the 2 2 pitch to Bird outside, 3 and 2. Yeah. What about infield? You take infield every day before the game? Yep, you take infield, outfield. I didn't take any more infield after that one game, but. I was quickly moved to the, the cow pasture in the outfield. Ground ball foul. Alvarez will take it in foul territory, and it remains three and two to Bird. And they do a lot of things with, with you know with defense is that as your outfielders, and, and I had a pretty strong arm when I was younger, so in the ninth inning I would go play right field for the guy who had who didn't have a, a strong arm. Next in or the next hitter was a right hander, and there was a guy in scoring position, they would call time. Send me from right to left and move the left fielder back to right field. Three strikeouts for Locke as he gets Bird. And there are two outs for John Mayberry. Yeah, see, that would never, the only time that would happen is if, you know, let's say a pitcher, we've seen that before, where a pitcher goes out to the outfield for one batter. As you watch that pitch to Bird, and then comes back in for the next batter. We saw that earlier this year. Did you do that too? I did Jim? that in the minor leagues. Really? Yeah. I couldn't get a guy out. My manager knew that, so I went out the right field for for one hitter, and then re-entered the game as a pitcher. So a guy came in to throw to yep. one batter. Yes. First pitch is over to Mayberry, and it's 0-1. My manager was Cal Emery, and the pitcher they brought in, I'm not mistaken, was Laddie Renfro. It was a side armor. It's kind of like your caddy. Yeah. <laughs> Check swing. Well, Alvarez will get another chance. Charges, picks it up, throws. So I guess it's the place where he doesn't have to think a whole lot that he's able to make cleanly. He helps retire the Phillies in order here in the fourth. We'll go to the bottom of the fourth inning here in Pittsburgh. And the Phillies are down by two.
Honda. Visit your local Delaware Valley Honda dealer. ShopHonda.com. Buy McDonald's. Any size hot or iced coffee is just $1. McDonald's. I'm loving it. And buy Dodge. Visit Dodge.com or your local dealer today. The El Thumper is rolling through the Allegheny as we go to the bottom of the fourth inning. Been a busy weekend for everybody here in the city of Pittsburgh. I think the Furries have left town today. I think everything's done with them, I think, anyway. The convention group that was here for the weekend. Ike Davis will lead it off for the Pirates. It'll be Davis, Alvarez, and Jordy Mercer. Phillies trail at 3-1. to one. A.J. Burnett will go back to work here in the bottom of the fourth. To the right side, Mayberry. One pitch, one away. And Pedro Alvarez is coming up. It's been a busy uh, weekend in, in Pittsburgh. Absolutely. Beautiful weather. Interesting sights walking to the ballpark. Putting them nicely. <laughs> <laughs> Great boats. Pedro Alvarez walked his first time up, was sacrificed up to second. And a two seamer that's in there. It's 0 1. I must say, that's the first time I've ever seen or heard of the, what do you call the furry? Furries. Furries yeah. convention. Just folks that like to dress up as animals. Never heard that. Yep. There's the 0 1 pitch. That one's pulled to right field. Marlon Bird comes running in, snares it. There are two outs. That's really the only way we could explain it. 2014 MLB All-Star voting isn't over quite yet. Be sure to vote for the final player for each league roster this Sunday through Thursday. Check Phillies.com on Sunday, July 6th to see who made the team and vote for who should get the final spot on each league roster. It is interesting, though. You walk through the, seats, uh, the streets and you see somebody dressed up like a fox or squirrel or, or something. Or dressed in regular clothes, wearing a tail of something. Here's Mercer who struck out, and it's 0 1. No balls and one strike to Mercer. And he fouls it back, and it's uh, 0 2. Take a look at the outfield alignment. Ben Revere straight away in center. He kind of shifted from one side of the bag to the other. Dominic Brown really deep in left field. Another foul ball and it remains 0-2. Dominic, by the way, that play yesterday that went over his head that he misjudged, uh, he did say he lost it in the sun. I was going to say it. A lot of clouds out today. There isn't quite as much sun. Yeah, today's a little easier day, and plus we're earlier in the day too. No two pitch. Not the end of the bat foul. The dirt with a change up and it's one ball and two strikes. By the way, we'll get you an update on Cliff Lee. He uh, scheduled to pitch game one of a double header for Clearwater today as he continues his uh, road back to recovery. Swing and a miss, and Mercer's down on strikes. The side is retired in order. Six strikeouts this afternoon for A.J. Burnett. Now he's hoping for a little offense, keeping his fingers crossed. The Phillies have just one hit as we go to the fifth.
quiz answer. All right, guys, who is the only player to homer in three consecutive All-Star games? You guys got this one pretty quick. I saw you write it down. I'm going to say uh, Ralph Kiner. Ralph Kiner is correct. Ralph Kiner homered in uh, 49, 50, and 51 as a representative of the Pittsburgh Pirates. There are his career numbers. He's a Hall of Famer. 301 home runs, seven time National League home run champion. Those are his numbers from the Pittsburgh Pirates. Of course, he did play for the Cubs as well. In fact, uh, he was traded in between games of a doubleheader between the Pirates and the Cubs. His number four is retired here in Pittsburgh, and because he passed uh, this past year, uh, the Pirates are wearing the number four on their uniforms. On their normal uniforms, not the ones they're wearing today, these throwbacks to the 70s. No balls and two strikes to Cody Ashey. Ashey struck out looking his first time up. And a liner out toward left field. That'll be in for a base hit. Harrison will cut it off, and Ashey will stop at first. So the second hit of the day for the Phillies comes here in the fifth inning. And now Dominic Brown is coming to the plate. The mentoring I think that uh, AJ has done has been quite evident here with. Uh, with Locke I think he's throwing the ball very well. It looks like he's believing in his stuff. Um, and he's pounding the zone. Getting a lot of quick outs. Producing some ground balls. It's really important to have a guy like that on the staff. Um, we've seen that with uh, with Doc with Cole. Um, with AJ on this staff, um, it, it, it really, you know, it, you know, and David Buchanan's getting a lot of that mentoring this year, and I'm sure he's getting it from, you know, like you say, the likes of Kyle, AJ, um, Cole, and uh, even from some of the hitters. You, know, you, you got to be asking questions, uh, but the biggest thing is, you know, you got to be teaching these young kids that yeah, they do have to believe in their stuff, and they got here for a reason. And the stuff that they had in the minor leagues is good enough to pitch at this level, but you have to get them to understand that they have how to utilize what they have. Well, last year the reason he made the All-Star team for the National League is because he was eight and two in the first half with an ERA of 2.15. Now he wasn't able to replicate the success in the first half. In the second half, he was only two and five with an ERA up over six. But. Eight and two with a 2.15 ERA at the break. Well, and some of that goes to you know you're a new face in the league. Hitters have to see you, and I think really you have an advantage when you see a hitter the first couple times. That one is lined out to center. McCutcheon comes running in, makes the catch. Yeah, there's one away. What it comes down to is learning how to make adjustments as they make adjustments to you, and those are the guys that tend to stay around. They learn how to make adjustments. Well, I mentioned that the uh, the Braves originally selected him in the second rounds, and then was traded to the Pirates uh, along with Charlie Morton and the Nate McLeod deal. That was when McLeod was a Gold Glover, and Pirates were not, you know, in the race, and they sent him over to Atlanta because Atlanta was looking for a leadoff hitter and looking for somebody to solidify their outfield. Here's Rupp. Rupp is 0 for 1. He struck out his first time up. Inside, one ball and no strikes. Now, Jamie, when you broke in, did you have somebody who took you under your wing? And Rick Sutcliffe and Scott Sanderson. Yes. Steve Trout a little bit. We had the likes of Jody Davis, who was a you know, perennial all-star catcher. Over to first Davis goes to second for one and back to first in time another three six three double play. And the side is retired here in the fifth inning. Ball was uh, spinning every which way Davis was able to corral it. And then Jordy Mercer came out of nowhere to cover second base for the Pirates. And make a really clean throw as he went away from Ashy. No contact and we'll go to the bottom of the fifth.
of good citizenship brought to you by Citizens Bank. Since 2007, Cradles to Crayons has served nearly 100,000 children living in poverty and everything they need, clothes, shoes, books, toys, and school supplies to feel warm, safe, and ready to learn. To make a donation or volunteer your time, visit cradlestocrayons.org. Good banking is simple, clear, and personal, and that's helping you bank better. Citizens Bank, good banking is good citizenship. Bottom of the fifth inning. And it'll be Jeff Locke, Gregory Polanco, and Josh Harrison to face A.J. Burnett. Burnett's allowed three runs so far in the first four innings of work. He gave uh, the lead back in the first. But since that time, yeah, Philly's offense just has been non-existent. Two, three, six, three double plays. I don't know if that's you can say that's hurt the, their innings, but it's hurt any optimism uh, for any offense in those innings. Lock takes a strike. It's 0 and 1. How about the Phillies have been held to five runs or less in each of their last 11 games? I mean, no team scores five runs or more in every ball game, but they've got 11 games without scoring uh, more than five runs. Well, and you would think that you're going to run into a three run home run. Exactly. Um, it just. Majority of the home runs, all the home runs we've hit have been solo home runs. Chopper to short, easy play for Rollins. And one away here in the fifth. Well, seven of today's 17 Philly at bats have been three pitches or less. Four have been two pitches or less. Yeah, and it's not as if they're swinging with two strikes. You know, Locke uh, hasn't had to go to the point where he's 2 2 or. 3 2 or anything like that. And Locke is the kind of guy from watching him, the guy that you got to get him to elevate the ball. And that's, I think, what happened in his second half last year. His team started to see the bottom of the zone, strikes at the bottom zone. They start taking pitches. He wasn't able to execute. And he now had to come back in the zone and he elevated pitches and he got hurt. There's Polanco. He's 0 for 2. He struck out and grounded out. That's one ball and no strikes. And believe me, being that type, same type of a pitcher, when when hitters don't swing at the ball down and you're not getting those strikes for calls, you have to elevate the ball in the zone. And when you don't have the stuff to get by people, you get hurt. So if somebody was going to beat you as a, as a hitter, would you say that they should run deeper counts? Of course. Of course. And the more pitches you see, the better the more comfortable you, you become you get a better look at the pitches you know what the movement is you get better timing and you know you see usually guys taking better swings and squaring the ball up more often because so, the pitcher is going to make a mistake and you don't have to be afraid of swinging two strikes normally no offense Jamie but a lot of times if they're not going to be overpowering right. two balls and one strike to Polanco. And it's three and one. And there's ball four. Polacco's aboard a one out walk here in the fifth inning. Philly's pet calendar, which we talked about last week uh, with Jen Utley, is now available. Proceeds for the sale of the $15 can, uh, calendar will benefit the Pennsylvania SPCA. It features your favorite players with their four legged friends or adoptable pets, courtesy of the Pennsylvania SPCA. 18 month calendar unveils in August, available for pre sale right now. There's Chase and uh, his dog Jack. For details, see pet calendar in the community section at Phillies.com. Josh Harrison tripled his last time up. He's one for two. The triple was his 200th career hit. Runner goes. Pitches hit foul over the first base side and out of play. No balls in one strike. A 
I'm not sure if that's a hitting and run or not, but kind of glad he swung and fouled that ball off. Polanco had a great jump at first base. Out towards center field, not that deep. Here comes Revere, here comes Bird, and Bird will make the catch as he crosses over. Two outs. Back to first goes Polanco. And that'll bring McCutcheon to the plate. And McCutcheon one for two today, singled and scored in the first inning. Pitch is over. It's no balls and one strike. Ball foul and it's no balls at two strikes. All right, I got a question for you guys. I'm going to put you on the spot here. Uh, two outs here in the fifth inning. Rollins and Hernandez are sort of cheating in a little bit. They're not back, which is where they normally would be with two outs. Is, is that a result of how slow this infield is perceived to be? The grass, you think? That would be my only response is they all, you know, even well, Cody might be, yeah, he's about a normal, yeah. normal depth. But yeah, they they might be banking off of that. Out towards center field, it doesn't matter because Revere will make this catch. And the side is retired. No runs, no hits, and one man left. We'll go to the sixth inning here at Pittsburgh. The Pirates hanging on to a two-run lead. Philly of the week is the 23 year old right hander who came firing into the bullpen when he got the call. The seventh round pick of the 2011 draft enters each game with a high speed purpose and is having success since he arrived. With a top speed arm, he has blown hitters away, and his off speed complement has kept hitters off balance and off his pitches. He is new on the scene, a welcomed addition to the Phillies' pen. And it's brought to you by Independence Blue Cross. Live fearless. Well, the Phillies uh, hope they get a lead today so they can bring Kenny Giles in again. He pitched an inning in the third yesterday. He was dominant. Uh, in fact, just like the, Bra uh, the Marlins players uh, and even the Braves players before, the Pirates players were raving about his slider after yesterday's ball game. That's a great thing. I mean, if you're looking for anything, uh, in a season uh, in which the Phillies already have 50 losses. 
the fact that Giles is up here now and is pitching as well as he is that's you know something to kind of hang your hat on even if it's a very small thing. AJ Burnett will take a fastball for a strike here in the sixth. It's 0 and 1. Burnett, his first time up, he walked. And it's 0 and 2. It's another interesting number. 11 of the Phillies outs today have been made on a fastball. There's another one that's grounded out to shortstop. And that means 12 outs. It's now time for you to tweet your photo using hashtag Philly fan photo for a chance to have it shown in an upcoming game broadcast brought to you by AT&T. Speaking of photos, these are the furries that we were talking about. Not all of them. It just you know they're like everybody else they're just dressed in animal costumes waiting for a taxi or waiting for an elevator. There's that tail we're talking about right there. Yeah they're in city of Pittsburgh this weekend yeah, they were here last year too when the Phillies were here. Everybody does things differently to amuse themselves during their walk of life. No balls at one strike. They have that up in Canada Matt. Not that I've ever seen. <laughs> now the convention here, it's the second straight weekend, brings in over seven million dollars to the city of Pittsburgh. So and they're utilizing all the hotels and everything like that. So balls and two strikes to Revere. Grounded out to second. He's grounded into a double play. Another foul ball and it remains 0 and 2. Over to third, another chance for Alvarez and throws him out. Two outs. One ground ball out after another for uh, Jeff Locke, the 26 year old left hander from Conway, New Hampshire. What do they call him, Jamie, up in New Hampshire? The Redstone Rocket. Redstone Rocket. I believe one of the writers up there uh, when he was covering him when he was a youngster is who gave him that name. Cesar Hernandez is 0 for 2. It's that one sharply, but right at the shortstop, Jordy Mercer. Three ground ball outs, and the Phillies are retired in order here in the sixth inning. Now the Phillies have one hit since the first, two hits overall. Locke is keeping them off balance as we go to the bottom of the sixth.
going on now. Toyota, let's go places. By Xfinity, your home for the most live sports. By WB Basin, you can't go wrong when you buy right. And by Budweiser, here's to Budweiser, here's to baseball. Well, it's a nice day to be along the Allegheny. I'm sure it's a nice day down in the at the Jersey Shore. Phillies trail the Pirates three to one. Phillies lost two of three to the Marlins and then have lost the first two here to Pittsburgh. They hope it doesn't come down to the last resort and their final at bat. But they haven't really mustered much offensively. Meanwhile, A.J. Burnett is meandering along here. He's only allowed the three runs so far. But he'll face Neil Walker, Russell Martin, and Ike Davis for the Pirates. Walker has an RBI and a sack fly. He's also singled and scored. Takes a strike, 0 and 1. John Mayberry is there for the first out. So one away. Let's check in with Greg Murphy. It's time for the Major League Notebook. Murph. All right. Thank you very much, Tom. Brought to you by Gwen and Mercy University. And it was just about this time a year ago that the Yankees reacquired Alfonso Soriano to help them out down the stretch, which he did. But today they designated him for assignment. Soriano was just batting 221 through 67 games this year. Uh, and that came on the heels of, you mentioned earlier, the Yanks acquiring Brandon McCarthy in a trade earlier this morning. And also, uh, as you mentioned, Tom, the, later on tonight, the All-Stars will be announced across the Major League Baseball on national television at uh, 7 o'clock. Uh, you know, the ballots have been counted, and everybody knows who's going. Well, no one knows yet, but uh, Major League Baseball certainly knows. We anticipate that Chase Utley will be, get, be told that he is headed to his sixth All-Star game, and we also speculated whether or not Jonathan Papelbon will be on that list. We'll find that out later on tonight when Major League Baseball makes that announcement, guys. All right, Murph, we appreciate that. Here's Rollins, who backhands and bobbles, throws to first in time. Mayberry picks it cleanly. Yeah, there are two outs. You know, I know Alfonso Soriano has not uh, hit well this year. He has six home runs, hitting just over 200. I think somebody's going to pick him up. I mean, do, do you two guys agree? I mean, he's owed a lot of money, but I think somebody's going to want to pick him up. Experience. Uh, he could be a guy that can come off the bench, maybe, and be a game changer. I'm thinking that that's I think Matt you hit the nail on the head. It's somebody that's looking for somebody that can come off the bench. I don't think he's going to play every day anymore. Um, I just think his skill sets defensively have deteriorated a little bit. Yeah. But I think as an offensive threat, he still has that ability. Joe Girardi said today, uh, Murph, I don't know if you saw this or not. He said it was uh, one of the hardest days he's had uh, as a manager was yeah. to inform. Uh, uh, Alfonso Soriano that he was designated for assignments. Well, you know, he'd been a big part of the Yankee organization years ago, and then, uh, as I mentioned, when he came back uh, last year, he really, you know, kind of came in and uh, hit for power and, and kind of was a spark plug for them down the stretch. But, uh, you know, you look at his numbers uh, through 67 games this year. I mentioned his batting average. His on-base percentage is only 245. Uh, he's struck out uh, more than 60 times, and he's walked less than 10. So uh, he has not had a productive offensive year uh, at all. So, you know, if someone were to pick him up, they're going to, have to take those kind of numbers into consideration. But, uh, you know, he may have to rethink the way he's going about things if uh, he's going to get back into the big leagues. Hey, I wonder if somebody like the Blue Jays would take a flyer on him because they're losing Edwin Encarnacion, it looks like, because of an injury. There's a strike to Ike Davis. It's three balls and one strike. Well, whoever picks him up is going to wait until he has that... Uh, a contract of a certain amount of days passed before right. you pick up the minimum. On the outside corner, it's three and two. By the way, it has started to rain here at Pittsburgh. What was a beautiful day is now a little cloudy.
foul back. That's where Murph wishes he had an umbrella. I could use one of those at, at this moment. That's true. Not always prepared, are you, Murph? <laughs> I had no idea it was going to rain no, today. I didn't it think was, it was going to rain today either. <laughs> it was gorgeous when we woke up. <laughs> Three balls, two strikes. And that ball hits sharply to first. Knocked down by Mayberry. And AJ's there to cover. Side is retired. Three ground outs here in the sixth. So six of the books here in Pittsburgh. We go to the seventh inning. The Phillies trail at three to one. Summary. Not a whole lot of offense here today for the Phils. Just two hits. They scored a run in the first, took the early lead on the single by Marlon Byrd. But then AJ Burnett allowed two runs in the first, one in the third. He's gotten six innings so far. Russell Martin, a two run double. Jeff Locke's been very good for the Pirates. He's only allowed those two hits. And now Jimmy Rollins will start the seventh. Rollins is 0 for 2. Reached on an error. Scored a run in the first. Grounded out to third. His last time up. Shows bunt. And it's one ball and no strikes. 75 pitches to start this inning for Locke. Cesar Hernandez flied out to center field in the first inning. And Dominic Brown lined out to center in the fifth inning. But this has basically been all the outs right here. One ground ball after another, even though some of them are an adventure for Pedro Alvarez. He certainly has had a zillion chances in this ball game. Well, and Jamie made a great point earlier that majority of the outs are on fastballs. Uh, which tells me that one, they're not ready to to hit the fastball. They're not taking ag aggressive swings. Uh, and, it, and it usually shows when you hit a lot of choppers in front of home plate. 13 ground ball outs today. Marlon fouls one, it's 0 and 1. Yeah, of those 13 ground ball outs, you're including the two double plays, the two 3 6 3 double plays. I am. I, you know, at, at a ball, pitcher's best friend. Yeah, there have been a lot of obviously bad losses during the course of the season. This is not a loss just yet, but through six innings, uh, this is as. Well, let's see that ball's hit well, deep to left field. Harrison's going back. It is gone. 
a solo home run for Marlon Byrd, and it's now a one run ball game. It's his third home run of this road trip. All three have been solo shots, but the Phillies are now down one, three to two. It's not to say this is as anemic an offensive display as the Phillies have had, but then Marlon Byrd jumps on one and crushes it deep to left field. Well, and, and the thing with Marlon Byrd is. is yeah, he has uh, quite a few uh, strikeouts this year, but you can see he stays back, change up down the zone, he drives at the left field, and I'm going to take my chances of having a hitter up there that swings. Even though he strikes out, he can do that quite a few times. Well, here's John Mayberry, and Mayberry takes it side. It's one ball and no strikes. Home run number 18 for Bird, 52 runs batted in. Uh, Mayberry takes it inside again. It's two and zero. Oh. oh, yeah, it was a long one too. This is a, that's a deep left field uh, here at PNC. Now three balls and no strikes. Oh, and also one Joe Fadden of Collingdale, a hundred dollars in a McDonald's home run jackpot. Three balls, one strike to Mayberry. Three and two. Mayberry has popped out to second. He's grounded out to third. It's the second time he's done that in the series. Right, and that's the reason why they have the big shift on in the infield. Well, for this home run and for each one hit by a Phillies player this year, this year, one tree will be planted by the Pennsylvania Hoarder Cultural Society as part of Home Runs for Trees, a partnership between the Phillies, PHS, and Aramark. Home Runs for Trees is part of a project to restore the region's tree coverage. For more information, visit phillies.com slash red goes green. Three balls, two strikes to Mayberry here in the top of the seventh. And he pulls that foul. Marlon pulled the Phils to within one yesterday in the ninth inning against Mark Melanson. And a call, strike three. Extended a bat for Mayberry, but Locke wins the battle. Well, it's time now for our Hyundai defensive plays of the game. He's had some pretty good defense behind him despite the error by Alvarez. No, he really has. And it was, you know, Ben hit the ground ball to Ike Davis. Pulling a very nice 3 6 3, then Cameron comes up and hits one off the end of the bat and gets another 3 6 3 and makes two huge pitches to get out of the, to get out of the inning. That is your defensive game, the play of the game brought to you by Hyundai. Mike Davis, as we said, is struggles offensively, but he certainly does not struggle defensively. Oh, and one to Ashy. Ashy singled his last time up. He's one for two. Brown ball to first, and Ike Davis on cue will take it to the bag. Side is retired. Phillies do pull within one thanks to a solo home run by Marlon Byrd. But as we stretch here in Pittsburgh, the Phillies trail it three to two.
of the Carnegie Mellon Free College Singers. Uh, what was a beautiful day early on, a little cloud cover here today. And we'll go to the bottom of the seventh inning in the Phillies trail at three to two. Phillies return home to Citizens Bank Park uh, before the end of July. They'll take on the Arizona Diamondbacks in a three game series on Sunday, July 27th. It's the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, Local 98. Cole Hamill's t shirt, free defense, 14 and under. For tickets to all three games of that series, you can log on to Phillies.com. AJ Burnett just now beginning his warm up tosses out on the mound. As they say, take me out to the ball game here at PNC Park. AJ, so far today, six innings, he's allowed three runs. We talked during the open about what he had done in his previous five starts. You carry it over to this one, number six. Uh, and, you know, some years, three runs allowed would put you in line for a victory at this point because AJ's pitched pretty well. Yeah, it usually does give you a good opportunity to. To be in some games and, w and win a, actually a number of games during the course of the season, but with the drought in run support, um, you know, the, the starting pitching um, in this Phillies rotation is starving for runs. Well, speaking of starting pitching, let's check in with Greg Murphy. Murph? Well, guys, uh, obviously it has been a, a tough go in Pittsburgh so far for the Phils, uh, and they're trying to avoid the sweep. They still have a little bit of time, but starting pitching has been uh, at the root of it. They've been falling behind early in games and giving up a lot of hits, and that's uh, been, if you look at the numbers through these three games, uh, through 17 and two-third innings, 20 hits allowed. You see the uh, the walks and the strikeouts are about what you would expect, and the you know even the earned runs, they're not giving up a ton of runs, but as you guys just also pointed out, not scoring a lot of runs, so you put those two things together and that's going to add up to a lot of losses which it has in this series in Pittsburgh. Yeah, you don't want to sugarcoat anything. I mean the Phillies have been really bad. There's yep. no question about that. But yesterday David Buchanan six innings three three runs. I mean you would take that on most days from a Phillies starting pitcher. For sure. I mean if you're given an opportunity especially early in the game giving up a couple of runs and then then battling back and, and keeping the game tight and that's all you ask of the starting uh, the starting rotation. They're throwing strikes, which I which I think is, is tremendous. Pedro Alvarez swings at the first pitch, the first strike, and Mayberry had a lot of chances the last couple of innings, takes care of Alvarez. Well, Roberto Hernandez, obviously in day one, did not have a very good day. I mean, that's the one blemish, but even go back to the last day in Miami, Kyle Kendrick was very good. Cole Hamels was kind of up and down in his outing against the Marlins. But you know, you think about even what AJ's done here today. As we mentioned, he's only allowed four hits. He's allowed three runs. He's made a couple of mistakes, and I think that's the frustrating thing for the starters is that you know, but you have to pitch like you can't make a mistake, and that's, I guess a, that's so. a tough way to pitch. Believe me, because you're going to make them. You know, and it's a, it's a matter of when you make them, and and how you make them, and who you make them to. I mean, David Buchanan, if he makes a mistake yesterday to. To uh, gotcha. you say Jordy Mercer okay. in the second inning or third inning, and he hits a ball off the wall. You know, he makes a mistake and throws a ball down the middle first pitch to Andrew McCutcheon, who's a you know a pretty darn good hitter, and he hits it out of the ballpark for a two-run home run. You kind of feel like you're pitching where you can't make any. Exactly. Here's the 0-2 pitch to Mercer. Ground ball to third, past Ashy. First hit of the day for Jordy Mercer, but it's his fifth hit in the series. A one out single to bring Locke to the plate. I guess you can uh, look for Locke to try to sacrifice here. If you look back to the second, that's exactly what the Pirates did with Alvarez over at first and one out. Now you have Mercer at first with one out. And I think I really believe you know some of the, what the Philly struggles are you know, they're not getting enough guys on and we talk about getting them over getting them in but when we get a guy on it's you know a double play or it's a pop up and you know it just takes any kind of momentum that you're trying to create it takes it away immediately it takes the wind out of the sails and you know it's almost to that point but I've been on these in on these teams where it's here we go again and you got to get out of that mindset it's hard though. So is baseball. <laughs> Lock butts it foul one ball and one strike. The crazy thing in this game nobody's going to feel sorry for you. So you need to stop feeling sorry for yourselves. I'm not saying that they are but if they are. You know, 
nobody cares because I mean put it this way when I say nobody cares the other teams don't care right that's who I'm referring to because we all you know everybody goes through it teams go through these ruts it just feels it feels like the Phillies rut has been sustained far too long we're over to first Mercer's back just before the tag by Mayberry one man down bottom of the seventh inning both bullpens quiet at this point You know, I, I'm watching how the defensive lineman is on the, on the bunt, and I, I like the fact that Cody's charging extremely hard from third base. The only thing they have to be careful with the way they're doing is, is the way that Mayberry Jr. is coming in for first base. You should go towards the mound a little bit this way to cover the bunt. And now Caesar has to be careful at second base because he's not coming in straight in this way and then going over he's going at the same time over this way towards first base so what happens is, is if, if Mayberry comes in almost like a like a little let's say banana or a little hook coming right. in that takes away from the bunt that he might try to pull towards second base or even the ball he just swung out with the rudder going right two balls and two strikes lock squares as she's coming in from third and he bunts it in front of the plate as she picks it up and throws to first. Sacrifice is successful for a second time. 5 4 on the put out. Two outs with the runner at second base. Comcast Sportsnet would like to invite you to the We Live Philly Sports Festival at the Please Touch Museum on Saturday, July 19th from 9 a.m. until noon. Play games and win prizes. Plus, meet the Fanatics, Swoop, Danny Pamels, Ricky Vitalico, Leslie Goodell, and Mark Sumoff. At the Philly Sports Parade at noon. You know, one thing I struggle with is in that situation right there, you got a one-two count. You're gonna, and he, the pitcher has to get the ball. Now, why are we throwing him fastball? Why don't we throw a curveball right there? Maybe he bunts at it. Maybe he fouls it off. It's a strikeout. They don't advance the runner. We let the Phillies let them advance that runner with two strikes. That makes no sense to me. Elevate a fastball, throw a changeup, throw a curveball down that he's got to, you know, he has to move to that ball. I, I just don't get it. And now you have a runner in scoring position for Polanco, and Polanco takes a strike. It's 0 1. We saw that happen, if I'm not mistaken, in Miami as yeah, well. Yeah, we did. Yep. It's, you know, anytime you get into a situation, you just let the guy bunt the ball. You really you don't want him to get to second base. Now a base hit scores him. A wild pitch moves him to third base. You know, I, I know, I, granted, I know there's two outs, but a base hit scores him. If you, if you strike out the pitcher right there or you pop him up, he's the base runner still on first base. Now it's still going to take two base hits in most cases to score that run. When you pitch, would you try to cut something when you threw it? I, I wouldn't be throwing a fastball right there, yeah. especially if I'm, if I'm ahead in the count. One ball and one strike, and now time is called by Polanco. And you got a young kid at the plate who hasn't handled the bat a whole lot at the major league level. And now you want to pay attention to the base runner. Where if you get this guy out, you don't have to worry about the base runner. I think the last time we talked about it was when Kendrick was pitching to Brad Hand in Miami. On the outside corner again, one ball and two strikes. That looks like a changeup from AJ. We're a breaking pitch. Had a little bit of a loop to it, so I guess it was a breaking ball to the outer edge. Popped him up, foul territory. Ashley will give it a look, but it's going to be back a couple of rows. Now a quick chat between Rupp and A.J. Burnett in front of the mound. A.J.'s about to throw his 100th pitch of the day. Here at the bottom of the seventh inning. Every time the Phillies pitchers retire the opposition, one, two, three, which A.J. has done twice today, Comcast will make a contribution to Phillies charities. 
Phillies baseball is brought to you by Xfinity, your home for the most live sports. Swing and a miss. He got him. He tied him up. And the side is retired. No runs. One hit. One man left in scoring position. Seven done here in Pittsburgh. The Phillies down by one. We'll go to work in the eighth. Nissan. Get to your local Nissan store for the ride of your life and save big today. By AT&T, mobilizing your world. And by Chevrolet, visit your local dealer at ChevyDealer.com. Top of the eighth inning, some changes for the Pirates. Starling Marte comes into play left field for Pittsburgh. Moving from left field to third base is Josh Harrison. I guess that's what they think of uh, Pedro Alvarez's defense over third base with his 18 errors. Dominic Brown to lead it off against Locke, and he takes a strike. It's all in one. Chase Utley's come out in the on deck circle, so it looks like he's going to pitch hit for Cameron Rubb. Round ball. Foul off the foot of Dominic Brown. 0 oh 2 to Brown. To the right side. Ball took a weird hop, but Walker stayed with it. Dominic was hustling one away. AJ Burnett getting the word during the inning that he was done. Gets stopped by Bob McClure. AJ's expressions when he's told that he's done are priceless. He's a competitor just like uh, anybody is that. Has pitched as long as he has. As Ryan Howard has come out in the on deck circle. The unfortunate thing is the Phillies having very little offense today, just the two runs they have to hit for him. Utley bats for Rupp, and he takes a ball down low. It's one ball and no strikes. And from a pitcher standpoint, boy, it's, if you feel like you're throwing well, you feel like you have the energy to go back out there, it's the most. Frustrating thing to have a coach come up and say, "Look, you're done." And you're like, "But, but, it, you know." But when you think about it, you really understand why. There's a high fly ball to right field. It will stay in the yard. Polanco makes the catch. Utley just missed it and just missed possibly changing AJ Burnett's fate. If that ball had left the yard, they may have put Burnett up there. But instead, after Bob McClure relayed the message, Ryan Howard will pinch it for AJ Burnett. DeFreitas and Giles warming up. So Howard will pinch it here in the eighth inning. 
five pitches two outs. There's number six and it's chopped foul and it's 0 and 1. There is bullpen action for the Pirates. Jared Hughes the right hander has been warming up. I think that's just in case there's any problems here by Locke, but I think he's going to finish this eighth inning and they'll probably give it off to Melanson in the ninth. 0 and 2. Jay Burdett and Cameron Rupp both done for today's ball game. That was a pretty good pitch right there. I'll tell you what, he has really worked the bottom of the zone and below the zone very well today. Sided low two and two. Over to first and Ike Davis will make the play on the glove side and the side is retired here in the eighth inning. Locke is getting a heck of a round of applause as he exits for probably the final time. He's got a one run lead as his team will bat in the bottom of the eighth inning. He's over 100 pitches just to barely. Justin DeFreitas will be the next pitcher in for the Phils. Time now for the Subway winning box score and we turn our attention to the Pittsburgh Pirates who are leading this one by a score of three to two. McCutcheon a run scored Walker a run scored Russell Martin's two run double in the first inning got the uh, offense going and then Josh Harrison scored a run uh, in the third after he led off with a triple. And they lead it three to two as we go to the bottom of the eighth inning Justin DeFreitas will be the new pitcher for the Phillies. Coy Hill will be the new catcher. As the Phillies have a new battery here. Those are the only two changes. Howard and Utley do not stay in the ball game. So DeFray, this is 23rd game. He's 2 and 1 with a 2.19 ERA.
breaking ball in there. It's 0 1. A good slider from DeFreitas. Just to finish up on Locke, he threw 101 pitches today, 78 fastballs, 54 for strikes. 78 fastballs. That ball goes off the glove of Cody Ashey down the left field line. Harrison's thinking too. He stumbled for a moment, but Dominic Brown's throw is offline. B5, that's the eighth error of the year for Cody Ashey. Just like his triple Harrison after this ball went off the glove of Ash, he was thinking too right out of the shoot. Yeah, he kind of got that no man's man. He kind of let it play. Uh, the little ole to the right. Uh, if, if you ask Cody, he'd probably say what I'd like to do different is put the body in front of it, you block it, and throw him out at first base. Well, now McCutcheon, he took a long look into the dugout as he was walking to the plate with the runner at second uh, here in the bottom of the eighth inning. They weren't going to ask him to. To bunt in this spot, but he was looking in there. I will say, I have seen him drag bunt in these types of situations. One for three so far. Well, if he does drag bunt, the corners are back. Harrison's going to get over to third as long as it's uh, on the ground. Check swing. He went 0 and 2. Then I showed you the first base up higher from our vantage point. As the eye in the sky, it did look like he did. He went on that one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Probably would have hit a double if he would have made contact. <laughs> Pickoff play is on and Harrison's back. Pirates are wearing the uh, uniforms from the 1970s, the same uniforms that were introduced in uh, 1970 and they wore in 71 and beyond. They've got the button, buttons at the waist, no belt. Another pickoff play. There's a lot getting congratulations. It's awfully nice. Well, Lanson's warming up in the bullpen. At least he was. So is Hughes. I believe Hughes has sat down. In the dirt, one ball and two strikes. Back in 70 and 71 when the players wore those uniforms they were a little tighter than they are now. Now they're a little looser. But authentic enough with the buttons at the waist instead of the belt. Or the elastic at the waist I should say. Inside two and two. I like when teams wear the old school uniforms. I used to wear them when I played. <laughs> they weren't old school. <laughs> they were just school. <laughs> sort of off colored gold that they had. Fly ball right center field. That's well hit. Revere on the run out toward the track out to the wall. He jumps. It's off the top of the wall. Harrison speeds around third. He's heading home. McCutcheon's going to third. No throw by Hernandez. An insurance run for the Pirates. It's a 4 2 ball game. Fourth triple of the season for McCutcheon. Well, that's why he wasn't uh, going to bunt. And he gets a fastball up in his own and thinks he hit a good enough out of the ballpark. And 
drives it to the right center and some kind of challenge or something? Or? Yeah, I think uh, Ryan Sandberg feels like the gentleman on the staircase uh, may have uh, touched that ball and directed it away from Ben Revere, who did jump for it. So they're going to review this one. Dale Scott will with Dan Iasonia. But when you're playing winning baseball, these are things that happen for you. You, know, you get the big hits, whether it's a sack fly, a triple, lay down a bunt, all the little, everything you do seems to work for you. That's uh, one of the reasons why you're winning. Well, they're going to take a look and see if a fan may have interfered here. It did look like it hit the hand of the fan. I, I mean, Revere was not going to catch it. So they are going to review this one. It was a gentleman in a white shirt. You can see by the replay that it did look like his hand misdirected it. Take a look again, guys. We slow it down, and yeah, I mean, it, it hit his thumb. His wrist, the bottom yeah, wrist. It'll, it'll just send. We'll catch him back to second base. Or the umpires can rule that he would have been on third base no matter what. The judgment called by the the, uh, the umpires. Well, Dale Scott is to your left, and I Sonia is to the right. And yeah, they're listening to the folks in New York. Revere did not have a look at that ball as he left his feet, and we'll get. The decision by the the umpires here. You can see a lot of nodding going on uh, by Dale Scott, and they say he's going to stay over at third base. So Dale Scott's going to explain this one to Ryan Sandberg. The ball barely hit the fan, uh, and because Revere, the way he jumped and the way his body was sort of contorted, uh, he didn't really jump to. He wasn't in position to make a play on it the way he jumped, but right. I mean, he tried to get to it. Well, you can tell by the way his glove is. <laughs> it's facing the wall, but you know, it's a judgment call right here in the situation for the umpires, and their judgment is that McCutcheon would have got the third base uh, either way. Fan interference or no fan interference. Yeah, there are times when a fan will obstruct like that where there could be an out recorded. You know that's a decision by the umpires right there that you know the, the fan although he did touch that uh, he did not cause Ben Revere not to uh, not to make the catch. So Defreitas is done and then the Phillies will go to the bullpen. Ryan Sandberg signaled for a left hander to come in. So Diekman who had been warming up for a moment uh, will come into this ball game. So pitching change with a runner over third. A run in an insurance run. It's 4 2 Pirates on top.
Jake Diekman's coming in. Jimmy Rollins is the Phillies all-time hit leader and big-time bats is releasing this full-size bat that is limited and sells for 109.95. Call now at 1-866-280-BATS or log on to bigtimebats.com. Cody Ashy, Jimmy Rollins uh, watching Jake Diekman uh, warm up. By the way, uh, we were told that uh, the play which was reviewed was overturned, which we don't know why that is, why they would say that terminology. So uh, the press box just announced that they are going to call New York because I think everybody's kind of confused up here why they would say it's overturned. They're going to call New York for clarification. Jake Diekman three and two with a 4.28 earned run average. And he's on the face. Neil Walker, switch hitter, batting right handed. Infield is in, and the first pitch is high, and it's one ball and no strikes. So I get a miss and it's one ball and one strike. One ball and two strikes. And what Matt was saying too about why McCutcheon's over a third is that it is up to the umpires after he confers with other umpires, they can determine uh, where placement should be. And they can look at the whole play. And that's when Dal Scott, through the advice of the folks from New York, decided that he would be able to be at third base, which is where he was standing anyway, that the interference by the fan did not uh, did not help McCutcheon or hinder the Phillies at all. But again, we'll try to get clarification from New York on why they said it was overturned, what the terminology is. Infield in, and the pitch. And he pulls that foul. And it remains one ball and two strikes to Neil Walker. Nobody out here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Well, he's down by two. It's another piece of it. It remains one ball and two strikes. Notice as of late, it doesn't seem like Deakman's able to get the ball in like he wants to. McCoy was looking for that ball, that fastball in there, and it rode back out up over the plate where he's probably okay to get that foul tip, but we're looking for a strikeout here with a man on third base and nobody out or an infield pop up. He got the strikeout. 98 on that fastball, and there's one away. Well, as promised earlier in the game, we have the ATT fan photo of the game. This one is uh, provided to us by Rugger TAP. It's from the home opener here in 2014 uh, on a bright, sunshiny afternoon at Citizens Bank Park. And that was a opening series against the Milwaukee Brewers. The Phillies will face tomorrow. They're going to intentionally walk Russell Martin here to put runners on first and third. And I really believe there's a reason why Ryan brought Diekman into that situation right there to face Neil Walker. Number one, to turn him over to the right side. Number two, to uh, to get that strikeout, which he was able to get. Now, now you have options. You can walk uh, Russell Martin here like they're doing. Uh, and now you'll have lefty on lefty or force Clint Hurdle to uh, throw out a pinch hitter. Which uh, Kevin Sanchez is already out in the on deck circle for the Pirates, the right handed version of their platoon at first base. So Martin is intentionally walked. That'll put runners on first and third. And Gabby Sanchez will pinch hit for Davis, who was 0 for 3. Sanchez's numbers are much better against uh, left handers. 
than right handers as Sandberg will trot out to the mound. This is not. I don't think to make any kind of pitching change. He does have Rosenberg warming up. And I think the only reason Rosenberg is up in case this inning inning becomes extended he doesn't want Jake Deakman to throw a whole lot of pitches here he wants to keep him as fresh as possible. There's Melanson who has been warming up for the Pirates well, after a long conversation. More or less it's a visit just to. You know, how are you going to align your defense behind you. In in the corners and double play ball up the middle. To me, that would be a given. Yeah, and it should. Well, the infield is a double play depth, and the pitch, fastball in there. It's 0 and 1. Gavi Sanchez on the year hitting 241 with five home runs, 15 runs batted in. A little high, and it's one ball and one strike. It looks like when he's taking that pitch, it's the ball's buying as he's taking it. Just foul past McCutcheon. And one and two to Gabby Sanchez. Side that uh, hit him, it did, and now the bases are loaded. Hit by pitch, load him up, and Pedro Alvarez, who was taken out of the ball game earlier, would have been a lefty up against Deakman, but instead, this is where Marte, who was inserted into left field in the defensive switch, will bat the right hander against Deakman. Bola trying to align the defense right now with Marte at the plate. Marte up for the first time today, hitting 255. Fouls it back. It's 0 and 1. Pretty healthy cut at a 99 mile an hour fastball. One run is in. It was an unearned run on a triple by McCutcheon. And a looper out towards center. Revere got a late start. It's going to drop in front of he and Bird. One run is in. 5 2. Pirates on top. RBI single for Marte. The bases remain loaded. Not sure why I get the, the slider right there, letting him get his arms extended, and he still hits it off the end of the bat for a single. I'm, I'm, look, you're throwing 99 to 100 miles an hour. Throw the fastball, keep it close to his body, try to tie him up. And you're right, he is throwing 99 to 100 miles an hour. I mean, that one right there is at 98. One ball and no strikes. You throw that softer pitch and you're giving the hitter just a tad bit more time to get to it. And, it, and that's all it takes with these guys. They're so darn good at hitting. 
And I don't know if Revere would have caught that ball or not if he had reacted better. It still would have dropped, I think. That one's hit out toward the alley in right center field. It's going to be tracked out by Marlon Bird. The runner will tag from third. That's Russell Martin. And another run is in. It's a 6-2 ball game. Excellent route taken by Marlon Bird out in right field to get to that one. Because it was hit well by Mercer. Well, for one thing we've seen Marlon Bird do this year is, and we've seen it three or four times in this series, is get tremendous jumps, uh, take the good route to get the ball, and he just has a lot of confidence when he plays defense. He made a nice play on Alvarez early in the game, hitting a line drive at him, went to the spot where it was going to come down, and it's all about getting good jumps. Well, here's Michael Martinez, who had a heck of a spring for the Pirates. Wind up going to AAA where he's hitting 252. Called up today, added to the roster with Clint Barmas going on the DL, former Philly. Switch hitter batting right handed against Deekman. And a slider, one ball and one strike. Dirt again, two and one. Well, Anson has sat down in the bullpen. Hughes is back up again because this is not a save situation anymore. Low again, three and one. Here's Jared Hughes. Here in the big leagues, Martinez is 0 for 3. He was up earlier for a brief period of time. Three balls, two strikes, runners go. And there's ball four. All right, so batted around here in the eighth inning. Jonathan Papelbon receiving some advice from one of Pittsburgh's finest. He just said, wow. Whatever the police officer just said to him, he just said, wow. <laughs> Blanco is swinging a miss at the slider 0 and 1. Not often that Paps uh, at a loss for words. He's let that police officer do all the talking. One ball, one strike to Polanco. And now time is called. I think they're talking hunting. Hard to say. Slider down. It's two and one. Well, what was a one run game is now a four run ball game here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Polanco today has walked once. He's 0 for 3, has struck out twice.
fastball in there for a call strike three and the eighth inning finally comes to a close. But three runs score one earned two unearned for the Pirates. Doesn't matter how you score it they have a four run lead as we go to the top of the ninth inning here at Pittsburgh. Is done. The Bills will hop on a plane and head to Milwaukee for a four game set, which begins tomorrow. Here is your pitching matchups. Cole Hamels will get the start tomorrow against uh, uh, Marco Estrada. Then it'll be Kyle Kendrick on Tuesday and Willie Peralta. Hernandez will go Wednesday for the Bills versus former Phil Kyle Loesch, who is 9 and 3 on the season. And David Buchanan gets the start. A day game on Thursday versus Matt Garza. All four right handed pitchers going for the Milwaukee Brewers against the Bills. In this series, guys. All right, Murph, thank you very much. The Brewers have lost already today. Gabby Sanchez stays in the ballgame for the Pirates to play first base. He pinch hit for Ike Davis and Jared Hughes into his 31st ball game. Phillies down 6 2. The Pirates are trying to pick up their first three game sweep of the year. They've had chances before, but they've never been able to finish off, at least here in 2014, finish off these sweeps. They're also trying to finish off what is a 10 game homestay with an 8 and 2 record. At the knees to Revere, it's one ball and one strike. Ben is 0 for 3 today. Softly to the left side, charging is Mercer, has to hurry and not in time. Good hustle by Ben Revere. He's aboard to start the ninth inning. And Cesar Hernandez will be the batter. He kind of slaps at the, to the right of short. Nice hustle on the first baseline and gets an infield knock. Cesar Hernandez is 0 for 3, two ground outs and a fly out. Jared Hughes on in relief of Jeff Locke, who went eight innings today and only allowed three hits. That's a strike. It's 0 and 1. No balls and two strikes. Rollins is on deck. And then Marlon Byrd. Down and away, one and two.
By the way, Major League Baseball has given us a ruling on what happened with the McCutcheon triple. Just to kind of wrap it up, it's more of a, uh, a house cleaning thing than anything else. It was not ruled interference initially, but after re reviewing it, the umpires did realize that it was uh, interference. They still awarded McCutcheon the triple, but the part that's overturned is that they did not originally score or originally judge it to be interference. And replay proved it was so that's why the the term overturned was used. There's the guy. He's still talking about. It. Would you say uh, AJ would have been an, a did a had a great teaching ability in helping uh, lock today, kind of like when you're young. Well, I would think so. I mean, I think it's some of the stuff that he probably picked up last year from what AJ had said. When you're young and you take a piano lesson and you, and you learn from taking the classes and using that, and you, and you build off of that and build off of that. And I, I just, I really like where uh, where Locke was coming from today, and, and I, I really feel that uh, his ability to take, I'm sure, not only what AJ's been able to help him with, but all of his coaches and, and building off of that and I, I for for Locke just coming back here in his first couple starts he threw the ball very well today. Yeah I think that it's a carryover from last year uh, and it's also what Ray Searage has been trying to preach to him this season too. You know it's kind of the same things and, and I think more than anything else you said the numbers and you guys both talking about it fastball command throw it for strikes move it around which is what he did. One ball and no strikes to Rollins. Over to first. Sanchez scoops it. It's a fair ball according to Dal Scott. It's his call. The home plate umpire. Three unassisted. That was a great play by Sanchez right there. Did you see him come after that ball to try yeah. to keep it from going into foul territory? It was really close. It was really interesting to see how they were going to call that. It was a fair ball. It's down to Marlon Bird, who's homer today. He's two for three. He has both RBIs for the Phillies. An RBI single in the first, a home run in the seventh. Pirates is trying to pick up their first sweep of the season. There's a bloop out toward first. Gabby Sanchez at foul territory puts it away. And the Phillies have indeed been swept out of Pittsburgh this weekend as they are retired quietly here in the top of the ninth inning. And the Pirates win it 6 to 2. Well, the fireworks have belonged this weekend uh, to the Pittsburgh Pirates offensively. They have made the Phillies, uh, these victories look very easy against the Phillies in this three game set. The Phillies are now one in five on this road trip and they will try to salvage something against the Milwaukee Brewers with this four game series. It's the first time they've been swept at PNC Park since April of 2002. Offensively just 11 hits in the three games and today was because of Jeff Locke and how good he was against this Phillies offense. Yeah I think he said Jeff Locke really set the tone early in this game. Gave up one quick run early in the game and from there he settled down and really was the pitcher that he wanted to be. And you know, as we talked about in the telecast, he used a lot of fastballs, got a lot of ground balls. His defense played very well behind him, turned a couple double plays, and uh, really kind of kept the Phillies at bay today. Well, he did, there's no doubt about it. He picked up his second win of the season, and he is our Chevrolet player of the game. So the Buckos uh, win it 6-2 to two over the Phils. They sweep them out here in Pittsburgh. We'll be back to wrap things up right after this.